Intro to Geometry is the heading, but having made that heading, I actually want you to make this heading, and then I want you to <laughs> cross out the word geometry. Okay? Now here's why, okay? I actually think calling this geometry is maybe a bit of a mistake, just geometry by itself, because you get the idea that a lot of things you learn in maths are kind of like this, right? In case you can't quite see, this is like ancient writing that's been engraved in stone, okay? Now, sometimes we approach a subject and it's kind of like, look, everything we know about this subject is now set in stone and you just have the job of learning what other people have already decided and have written down. And that's why it's in a textbook and so on, okay? The reality is, the reason why I don't want you to just make the heading geometry is because geometry is not set in stone. It never has been. People have been arguing about this for centuries, right? And further developing this idea. In fact, as I get to the end of this, you will see that this is an ongoing project that's still happening today, okay? So in fact, I think a better name for this topic that we're doing, it's a little bit cheesy, but this topic really is a global historical project. It's the global historical geometry project. That's what this topic really is. It's, it has a long past, right? Uh, it has come from centuries, as you'll see in a second. And it's had contributors from all over the world. In fact, I've put in a few different countries there that will show you the contributors to this project. And the project is still happening. It's still happening today. It's pretty exciting, actually. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I thought about how to present this to you in a, in a nice, clean way that will enable you to sort of take some notes that make some sense and be coherent. I'm going to introduce you to some personalities. Some of them you know, some of them you don't. Okay? Um, they are by no means the only people involved in this story. Okay? But they are kind of like the main characters. Let me introduce you to some people. Here we go. Here's my first person, right? And uh, this is very, very old, so I'm not expecting that anyone knows who this is. Any takers? I've heard some great suggestions. We are in the right country, most of you. The person who this is, is named Euclid. That's the first little heading you can make. Euclid, okay? Uh, Euclid lived a very, very long time ago, and he was interested in shapes. In fact, he was the kind of person, you can actually see what he's doing if you squint, he's drawing shapes, okay? He was the, the main person who introduced us to this idea of understanding shapes as these perfect ideas <laughs> out there. Like, okay, look, right? Um, have a look at, okay, have a look at my watch. Right? Have a look at my watch. Uh, what shape, just the face, what shape is the face of my watch? Circle. It's a circle, right? Right? Wrong. It's not a circle, okay? Not just the fact that, you know, it's got, it's got knobs coming out and all that kind of thing. But if you take like a microscope, okay, and you zoom in on my face, what you'll actually find is it doesn't look like this when you zoom in. It actually looks like there's like weird bits and dents and all that kind of thing. You zoom in, right? And um, this heaps of, like I've dropped this a hundred times, right? It's nothing like a circle. It only looks like a circle because you're very far away, okay? But Euclid said, look, this, this shape and all the other shapes that we see around us, they're kind of like shadows of a real circle somewhere in space that's like the perfect shape, an eternal shape. In fact, that's kind of his reason why these, he was interested in these shapes. He said, look, these shapes, they, they represent something about reality that's deep and eternal, right? They're timeless. 23 centuries ago, right? He came up with these ideas and we still use them today. In fact, the geometry that we're talking about, like when we say geometry, what we really mean is, and this is part of, um, this you can go under your heading for Euclid, is called Euclidean geometry. He's such a big character that this whole field is named after him. It's the geometry of things on flat surfaces. You can see he's even drawing them, right? A circle is a flat object. Right? Euclidean geometry is all about, I should say, shapes. Shapes on flat surfaces. 
okay? That's what Euclidean geometry means. And in fact, pretty much all the way through high school, geometry means Euclidean geometry. That was Euclid, okay? Uh, he is in fact called the father of geometry, and that's why it's named after him, okay? But here's the thing, right? Uh, and this is what I'm very excited to show you, right? This is not where the journey ended, okay? Not by a long shot. Let me introduce you to the next person. Okay. Uh, I'm expecting no one knows who this is, right? This person, can anyone get, what country does he look like? It's not Jack Greece. The America. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. I heard the right one. Austria. This man Russia. is named Nikolai Lobachevsky. Oh, if we knew that name, we okay? know okay? Yes, this is true. Shh. The name is a bit of a giveaway. Yeah. Okay? So, just let me come back to this, right? Russia, 1792 to 1856. Okay, now, we just looked at Euclid, right? 300 BC. Euclid's ideas were so big and so massive, they lasted, right? It's not because, oh, like, no one thought of new ideas. It's because his ideas were so timeless. They just kept sticking around and no one had any different, well, no majorly different ideas. Until Lobachevsky, and like I said, there were many people who he was working here, but he was the main person, okay? Lobachevsky said, well, Euclid was interested in shapes on flat surfaces. Right? Hmm. But they're not all flat, right? I want you to um, picture something, for example. Um, I want you to picture just a map, okay? So here's a map, right? And, um, you know, it's got some, some country on it, something like that, okay? Now I'm going to pose a riddle to you, which Lobachevsky will help us answer, okay? Here's the riddle. A man starts at a certain place. The man does three things. First, he walks one kilometer south. One kilometer south. <coughs> Second, he walks one kilometer east. Third and last, he walks one kilometer north. Okay? Now, in Euclid's world, this is what he's done. This is the path that he has traced out. Okay? But, there is a place, and here's the riddle. I want you to answer for me if you can. Right? There is a place where, in fact, if you trace out those three steps, <laughs> south, <laughs> east, north, you end up where you started. Have a wow. think about it. There's a place in the world where if you start somewhere, you go one kilometer south, one kilometer east, one kilometer north, you the end north where you started. Yeah, north pole. The north pole. And I think Nathan had his hand right up. Well done, you got it. If this spot here is the North Pole, think about it, right? Think about it. South is any direction. If you go south, actually, from the North Pole, every direction yeah. is south, right? You're yeah. walking away from the North Pole. Yeah. Now, when you walk one kilometer east, right? What's happening? You're, um, you're going just around, like in a circle around the North Pole, right? When you walk back north, you're still one kilometer away from the North Pole. So that one kilometer back north takes you back. Now, here's the thing, right? This, this riddle doesn't make sense in Euclid's world. And the reason why is because Euclid's world is flat. But Lobachevsky said, hold on. Why should we think the things are flat? The thing we're standing on is not flat. It's a, well, roughly speaking, it's a sphere. It's, it's not really a yeah. sphere, is it? But that's the basic idea, right? Yeah. So Lobachevsky explored this idea of what happens when geometry is not flat, okay? Now here's an example. Here's an example of a shape that Lobachevsky has called. He called it a saddle because, you know, you know on a horse, you sit on a saddle. But of course, you might think, that's not a saddle. I know what that is. Oh, that's a pringle, right? Now, this whole idea of geometry that is not flat. It's groundbreaking. It's so groundbreaking, in fact, that uh, it got a new name. Uh, just like Euclidean geometry, Have this kind of geometry, geometry is called Lobachevskian <laughs> geometry. Let me write that. So Lobachevskian geometry is shapes on curved surfaces, right? Shapes on curved surfaces. Now, I will just quickly tell you, and you might be able to see why, <laughs> the name Lobachevsky in geometry doesn't always stick. Not everyone's that happy with the name. Can't think of why. So here's another name for it. If you're curious, 
The, this is not the only kind of shape, right? Is There's loads of other ones like it. It's just one example. A synonym for this, another kind of name for this, Pringles which describes what the shape is, is it's called hyperbolic geometry. Oh, yeah. That's a fancy name. Yeah, this kind of shape, this curvature, right, is a kind of hyperbolic shape. That's, that's the name of that kind of curved object, okay? So this is what Lobachevsky had as an idea, right?